Welcome to Mr. Flaherty's classroom. This should be for anybody that is in my third period. So that would be secondary math one. My plan is to do one of these YouTubes each week to go over the two different assignments that I give you guys. And I hope this should give you some background and assistance with this and help you out. I know it's been a little bit crazy with this online for teaching, for learning, uh, but hope you guys are doing well with it. Hope you're staying um, healthy, positive. And again, I'm hoping these tutorials will help out. So today what I wanna do is sections 8.6 and 1.2, which remember are gonna be due for you guys on next Monday, which would be the 20th of April. I'm going to walk you through the computer, what you should do on the computer. I can show you step-by-step -step guys on how to log in and all the different variety of materials that are available for you on that. And then we're gonna look at a couple problems on the whiteboard that are specifically right from those two assignments. And that, that should help you out again for this first week. Okay guys, so this, uh, I wanna demonstrate with you exactly what happens online on the tech, for the textbook. So you guys should be able to get online and your big idea is math. But instead of just going to the assignment, there are several things you can do. One is go to the COVID-19 support on the very top. And if you click on that, and then if you scroll down to the right on the very bottom, it has student resources. For student resources, there are four here, guys, that you can look at. And they're all very good, so I'd suggest taking a look at these. For example, the Learn About Student Resources. When you go into that, there are tons of things here. There's the Student Edition eBook, which is the electronic book. So it's the exact book that I've used all year. This right here would be a tutorial for you guys for grade six through 12. So if you click on that and watch that tutorial, that'd be perfect. So I would highly suggest doing that. You can access online lessons and also it gives you another tutorial for that for grades six through 12. So if you hit that again, check that one out. Excellent source for you there. Now, if you um, go back to the dashboard then, and again, there's those four to check out. But if we go back to the dashboard, Probably the most important one for you guys is the ebook. So if I, if you get in yours and if you click on the ebook, this is again the electronic book. And what I have you guys do is read certain pages and then do problems right after that. So this week I've assigned for you guys problems from section 8.6 and then that takes care of chapter 8. And then what I want to do is go back to chapter one and start there and hit all the main concepts that we've had all year for secondary math one. So to go to 8.6, what you're going to do is go to page 424. So if you go up in the middle here, you'll see you can click on that and it says go to. So you're just going to go to page 424, enter that in there, and it's going to take you right to 8.6 and what this is is this is the base the lesson for 8.6 prior to the problems and off to the side here you have different options you can go to settings and you can go from two page to one page which is what I kind of like so now you're just dealing with one page at a time on the right side is your magnifying glass so you can enlarge this and you can go through this and this is excellent guys so 8.6 there's a lot of key terms here. So we're looking at supplementary angles, supplementary, complementary, adjacent. Remember, complementary angles are two angles that add up to 90. Supplementary, two angles that add up to 180. Adjacent angles, adjacent means right next to. So you're looking at two angles that are right next to each other. In this case, five and six. They share this common side blue, the blue side, the blue ray is part of both angles. So five and six would be an adjacent set of angles where seven and eight are not. Also on this, they give you, which is really nice, you can go down then. So if I go down this page, you'll get some examples here. So example one is showing you the identifying pairs of angles. So on this, you're looking at what types of angles these are in the figure, name a pair of complementary, name a pair of supplementary, name a pair of adjacent angles. 
Now, the really nice thing with these examples is, is you'll notice on the left side here where it's got the blue arrow with tutorial. So all you need to do is change into the arrow here. If you go and hit tutorial there, it gives you a nice tutorial for that example. So I highly suggest looking at those examples. So if I go to the next page there, you get uh, on the next page we have example two. And again, the same idea. It's talking about finding the angle measures here. And you'll notice on this, I just want to highlight this little box here means it's a right angle. That's 90 degrees. So the sum of those two angles would have to add up to 90 degrees. And again, they walk you through that on the tutorial here. These two angles would be supplementary. They form a linear pair. Remember, guys, a, two pair, a pair of angles that form a line make a linear pair, which means they have to add up to 180 degrees. And again, that would all be in the tutorial there. And then you can go through the monitoring progress. Same thing. Those are excellent problems. They walk you through those on tutorials. Same thing down in the bottom here. They give us another example with another monitoring progress on the bottom of that page. So those are excellent, excellent examples for you guys. Then it talks about linear pairs, which I just mentioned. Again, a pair of angles that form a line. And you have vertical angles. Remember, vertical angles are when two lines that intersect. They form two sets of vertical angles. Three and six would be vertical. Four and five. It's kind of like the bow tie. I call them a bow tie because they look like a bow tie. Three and six would make a bow tie. Four and five. Those are called vertical angles. They're made up of opposite rays. And then you get some problems where you're identifying the pairs of angles. And again, it walks you through the tutorial on that. So again, take a look at those. Excellent problems to review and look at. On the next page, same thing. You've got more monitoring progress. Some more examples here for you on these. And then you come down here and it gives you a little summary for the uh, interpreting a diagram. And again, things you conclude, not conclude. Then if I go over here, then you hit the problems. This, guys, is where I put these problems in the, on your assignments. So these are the, the assignments I give you are right from your textbook here. I just pull the problems from exactly from these. And this walks you through and shows you, uh, or it gives you the different problems, which again, I pick. That is section 8.6. I also assign this week then section 1.2. So for 1.2, guys, that starts on page 12. So now we're going to kind of backtrack and go back. But I really want to do this. I think this is going to be really key to go back and hit the, the main concepts we had all year. So in chapter one here, this was on solving equations, but this is critical because you need to know how to solve one-step, two-step, multi-step equations. So 1.2 is on multi-step equations. And again, it follows you through the examples there with the tutorials. Same thing here. Remember, you've got the distributive property. We're on this, you're gonna take two and distribute it. So two times one is two minus two times x is two x, so it's two subtract two x, plus three equals negative eight. And then remember, you gotta get your like terms together. And finally, get everything to one side and get x on the other and solve for x. The nice thing with these is you can always check your problem. So make sure, as you see here, you can go back and you can replace your value that you get for x, put it back in the original equation, and make sure that you get the right solution. And again, you can keep going through these. They give you more examples with your tutorials. Excellent problems there. And again, same thing here. They're looking at setting up a, pro a story problem and then walking you through that. And here are the problems for this section, the 1.2. And again, this is where I assign them for your second assignment for this week, which again was on section 1.2. And what I want to do is um, hopefully uh, walk you through these and again, help you out with the different, the two different sections each week, going through them to help you out with your assignments. All right, guys, so let's take a look at, from your assignment, there are numbers 15 through 18, the picture looks like this. 
And a couple of the questions. One asks for which one is a linear pair with angle one. So a linear pair with angle one. So if you look at angle one, angle five and one together make that line. So one and five would make a linear pair. They also ask what angle makes a linear pair with angle seven. Well, seven and eight would make a linear pair. Seven and six. So that one's going to give you two different answers. Okay. Also, it asks about vertical angles. Vertical angles, remember, would be like one and four. The bow tie, they're angles that are formed by two lines that intersect like that, and they're opposite each other. We also have two sets of vertical angles down here. Six and eight would be vertical, and seven and nine. Another type of problem that you're going to see in your assignment is where they give you a word problem, and you have to set it up and solve for each angle. So I gave you one, this is similar to 19 through 21, uh, that should help you out with these. And it reads, two angles form a linear pair. The measure of one angle is three times the measure of the other angle. The directions on this would be to find the measure of each angle. So to do a problem like this, you're gonna let X be the angle. And if X is the angle, the other angle in this would be a linear pair. Together, you know, they make 180 degrees. So that other angle is gonna have to be 180 subtract X. So now when I do this problem, I have my x is the angle, 180 minus x is the other. If I read the problem, it says the measure of one angle, x, is is equals three times the measure of the other. So it's three times 180 minus x. And now to solve this problem, you distribute your three here. So three times 180 is 540. Subtract 3x. You're going to add 3x to each side. You're going to get 4x is 540. Divide by 4, you gives you x is 135. So that means your one angle is 135. That means your other angle would have to be, so if x is 135, the measure of the other angle, well, if they are a linear pair, is going to have to be 45 degrees. And now these two angles, they satisfy the two conditions. They're a linear pair because they add up to 180, and one of the angles is three times the measure of the other. 3 times 45 gives you 135. All right, I want to go through a couple of problems with you guys from section 1.2, which was solving multi-step equations. So problem 19 from your assignment looks like this. So in order to solve this, remember, you've got to first take care of parentheses. So on a problem like this, we're going to do 6 plus. We're going to distribute that 5, so it's going to be 5m. And then 5 times 1 is 5 equals 26. you got to get your like terms together. So on like terms on this side, 6 and 5 add up to 11. So we're going to have 11 plus 5m is 26. We have to move that 11 over. We're going to isolate the m. So remember, to isolate the m here, we're going to have 5m is equal to, if I subtract 11 from both sides, that's going to give us 15. Finally, divide by 5, we're going to get m is equal to 3. The nice thing with this is you can take your answer and plug it in and see if it works. 3 plus 1 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. 6 add 20 gives you 26. So you know you got the right answer. So you have several problems like that. So that should help. Number 30, you have problems where you've got to change it into a math expression in the solve. This one says the difference of 3 times a number and 4 is negative 19. So difference means subtraction. So we're going to do 3 times some number. We're just going to call that number x. So 3 times x, we want to do the difference of that and 4. So 3x take away 4 is, means equals, negative 19. This is our equation for it. Then we need to solve this. So we're going to add 4 to each side. So we're going to get 3x is equal to negative 15. Remember, a negative 19 add positive 4 is going to give you a negative 15. Finally, divide by 3, you're going to get x is negative 5. So on these problems, you got some keywords. So remember, difference means subtract, product means multiply, sum means addition, difference or uh, quotient means divide. Thanks, guys. Hope this helps. We will do another one next week for you. Have a good week.